What's going on guys? We're about to embark on the first service for the KTM 1090 adventure. This is a 2018 model and we've hit the recommended 1000 kilometers or 621 miles. <laughs> So we're going to do most of the first service here in the shop and uh, some of the stuff like hooking it up to a diagnostic computer I'm going to have the uh, my local dealership do. But simple things like checking the brake lines, um, changing the oil, that's all going to be in this video. I'm going to throw up a quick list of everything that we're, uh, we're going to be working on today. It's a pretty long list so the font might be kind of small, get ready to pause the video here. And then um, we're going to start in on everything. The first things uh, I'm going to do is I'll put some text somewhere at the bottom of the screen, somewhere down here, maybe over here, depending, with some words describing what we're doing. So at that time, so you can scrub through the video and see uh, see the various things that are involved in the first service for the 1090 Adventure. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of talking or explaining. I'm just going to be doing it, and I might throw up some annotation or text about torque specs and uh, you know, oil viscosity and things like that. So uh, expect to sit back, relax, and uh, watch me go through the first service on the KTM 1090 Adventure R. One more thing before we get started on the KTM here. I am not a certified KTM technician, nor am I a professional mechanic in any capacity. I am a good reader of manuals. That's what I can do. I can read and follow instructions in a service manual and the owner's manual. So that's what I'm going to be doing. You know from the dirt bike videos that you've seen, that's a 94YZ250. If you haven't seen the, the, the videos, uh, I su suggest you go back and watch them. Um, I kind of know what I'm doing. If you have any qualms about warranties or any issues related to you doing the service yourself or you just don't want to, you don't want to deal with all this rigmarole, I recommend you consult with a certified technician and you get the bike into a shop where they will do this for you for a fee. Okay. First thing is check. We're going to do some inspection on the brake system. You can see the brake fluid. We're going to check the level. We're going to make sure there's no leaks here uh, coming out. I should probably throw some gloves on. On the master cylinder, there's no leaks on. Now, one other thing, it says check the brake fluid. What it's also meaning is for coloration. So this can get pretty dark. It's supposed to be sort of a light tan. You can see it's sort of a medium amber right now. It can get pretty dark and I've even seen brake fluid turn black. Um, so this is, it, it will need to be changed out, but we're not quite there yet. Um, the same could be said for the front, but the front is used much more often. So we're gonna check the level on the brake fluid up there as well. I'm gonna trace this all the way back to the rear caliper and then we're gonna check the lines in the front for the front brake fluid as well. This is the ABS. There's a bunch of ABS braided brake lines that go up to the ABS system and then come back down from the ABS sensor. So we need to check and inspect for leaking or uh, damage or anything like that on all of these. So. So I've traced the brake lines up for the control unit for the ABS up underneath this. God, I don't even know what this is, ECU or something. Um, and they come in, all the brake lines come in underneath here, and then they attach, and there's a bunch of sensors and brake lines attached to the top, and you can see down this hole um, to, the, to the ABS sensor. So I'm not gonna remove this whole plastic tray to get underneath there to inspect the ABS sensor. What I am doing though is I'm looking through the hole to see if there's any leakage or fluid at the junction for the uh, for the uh, ABS sensor where the banjo bolts are, are into the uh, sensor there. This is really not an ABS sensor. It's probably called an ABS control unit. You can see there's a banjo bolt with the sensor on top of that. And then there's two more banjo bolts uh, towards the as the, as the rider sits to their left, the control left side, um, this direction, this underneath this bit right here. So I'm just looking for fluid leakage there. Same thing for the front here. We're going to start by checking the side glass and making sure that there's fluid in there. Ooh, that's not focusing at all. There we go, right there. There's a little bit of glare from the flashlight. 
but we just need to check to make sure there's fluid. Then we're going to come around and we're going to inspect the line at all junctions right there. Make sure we don't have any leaking fluid or loss of fluid. Trace that down. It's going to go into the ABS control unit, which we've already looked at. And then it's going to come back out and either side of the caliper or either side of the wheel to each caliper down here, which we're going to inspect as well. I might add this in annotation, I don't know, but if you see a bubble in the brake fluid, if you can see the top of the, of the brake fluid line in the sight glass for the front, you need to add fluid. We can't see a bubble, so we're not going to add fluid. We're just going to move on. quickly look at the shocks here for leaking fluid. One of the best ways to do that is to compress the shock. You can also just inspect the, uh, to make sure there's no fluid coming out over the dust cover here. Ooh, that's bright. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe up all these marks with, with a rag real quick. It's just on the chrome. There we go. We'll go do the other side and then we're going to do the rear shot. So nothing leaking out here and we would see down here if there was actually leaking fluid. Um, so nothing there. Let's go check the rear. Rear, you're going to see it along that same chrome shaft on the bumper. So in there in that small diameter chrome shaft and then on top of the bumper you'd see fluid leaking out right there. There we go, there's a better shot for you. So I don't see anything, but I'm gonna get my fingers in there and check, make sure they don't come out wet. I'm just gonna check to make sure there's no fluid dripping or leaking, seeping even. And I don't see anything, so we're gonna move on. Okay, I just recently put these tires on this thing. I put some street tires on there, some Continental Trail Attack 2s. Um, because I didn't want to wear out the TKC 80s that are up on the shelf over there. So um, I know that the tread is fine on those. It does recommend checking the tire tread. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check the pressure and then I'm also going to... Uh, when I had the tires off, I should mention that when I had the tires off and I was changing out the wheels and rebalancing them, I checked the run out and I tightened the spokes. There's a separate video on that that's recommended from by KTM, but I literally did that like 50 miles ago. So the spokes have already been tightened prior, just a couple miles prior to the first service. So I'm just going to check the pressure now. Hello. I'm going to check the coolant level. You can see the indicator right here on the inside of the, uh, basically underneath, uh, next to the, the radiator and on the inside of the front, above the front fender. I don't see any coolant in there. Uh, I might shake the handlebars and wiggle it around to see if I can get some coolant here. There it is, right at the very bottom. See that? Um, we're going to add some coolant. <laughs> I didn't go all the way to the top 
stopped right about a quarter inch below the, the max line. So these are the drainage hoses and three of them are open, but one of them has a bolt in the end of it. So we're just removing the bolt, check to see if there's any back fill of fluid, put the bolt back in if there's not. So here you're gonna see me going around just checking a bunch of various bolts, mostly on the engine, eight millimeter bolts. Um, uh, maybe some stuff on the, on the shocks or the suspension, so, and the handlebars, those kinds of things. So I'm just gonna be checking a whole bunch of different hardware on the bike all the way around. Uh, to make sure that what I can get get to is at least tight. We're gonna go through and clean and lubricate, not clean, lubricate a bunch of stuff. Lubricate the side stand, lubricate the chain, maybe lubricate the hand levers, the, the brake and the clutch lever at their junction, and then uh, um, the grease the point pivot points for the front and rear foot pegs, the uh, the pivot point on the gear shift, on the uh, and uh, basically we're just adding a bunch of lubricant or grease to the various um, joints, pivots, and springs on the motorcycle to mostly protect them from rust, but also to keep them nice, well, uh, well operated or, or clean, I guess smoothly operated is the word I'm looking for. I don't even know at this point. Okay, now we're gonna start on the oil nozzle for the clutch. I don't actually know where this is and there's no service listed in the owner's manual, but it is part of the recommended service for this um, for this interval. So I'm gonna see if I can find it. And then once I've got the jet out from the oil nozzle, uh, what it looks like and if I can clean it. So this is a little bit of a trial by error here. Trial by error, that doesn't even make sense. Trial by fire, whatever. Right down there, boy that's dark, right there is a small aluminum plug. Well it's not small, but it's an aluminum plug. And it is what holds, it's covering the, uh, <clears throat> the clutch oil jet. So we're going to pull out the plug and then underneath that there's going to be a brass jet to pull out. <laughs> There it is. And there it goes on the ground. We're good to go here. Time to put it back in. <laughs> oh man, that's so hard to get. Anyway, that's where that lives. Right down there. We're gonna put it back.
Okay, time for the oil change. Um, we're going to start the oil change by running the motor for about a minute and then we're going to proceed with the oil change. Oh, that took some doing, huh? So I've got some fresh oil here, just putting on the gasket, the o-ring, and dropping it. Um, this thing is like prone to being dropped. Um, one thing I'll say is like I would have definitely replaced these o-rings and the ones on the screens, but this is the very first oil change. Only had 600 miles. These should be able to survive past 600 miles. So. You gotta be kidding me. All right, try again. Mark it with a tape. Basically, put my tire as close as it'll go. Look on the headlight. And then we want you to mark at the center of the headlight, top and bottom. Now measure with the tape measure two inches down and mark that. So what we want is our light dark boundary to be near the top edge of this at 16 feet.
Okay, we're gonna reset the service display here. And we're gonna do that by, so it's giving me the service signal and I'm gonna hold top and bottom here. And now I've got the service interval. So now you set the next service interval. And the next service is in 15,000 kilometers or 12 months. We'll just say or 12 months. 14.99 kilometers or 12 months. So there we go. It's 15,000 kilometers, which is 9,300 miles. cross-thread. Okay, now we're gonna go through and, uh, whoa, camera. <laughs> um. <laughs> you can find it. We needed a pickle. A pickle. It's funny, I just checked to see if these bolts were tight five minutes ago. And now I'm taking them off. There's a bug down in there. Right there. Well, I can't put any kind of twisting force on the screwdriver. Because all I have is like a finger on it, two fingers on it. How is this thing supposed to come off when it doesn't even have holes in it? Is it made of magic? I don't understand. Is it unscrew? Looks like it. He doesn't know what he's doing. That doesn't even make sense! That's him farting in case you can't hear it. I don't have to say it. He told the YouTube that you're farting. That's what he does in all his spare time, is farts. His favorite hobbies Work on equal motorcycle riding and farting. That's it? And farting while motorcycle riding. <laughs> I do that, but no one ever knows. <laughs> We can reach inside this lip. Oh, why do I feel like it's just gonna come? Hey, that worked. Reaching inside the lip. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> twelve? If a twelve-year-old gets that joke, then that's a mature twelve-year-old. Okay. You guys didn't think I was gonna leave burnt on oil and chain lube that had dripped down on my pipes, did you?